हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम शमशुद्दीन आई वेलकम यू फिनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग क्लासेस इन दिस क्लास आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर्स इन सेक्शन ए ऑफ फाइनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग लेट अस बिगिन द क्लास इन दिस क्लास आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर्स फ्रॉम फाइव चैप्टर्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग बी कॉम फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर एन ई पी स्कीम द फर्स्ट चैप्टर कंसाइनमेंट अकाउंटिंग सेकेंड चैप्टर रॉयल्टी अकाउंट्स थर्ड चैप्टर जॉइंट वेंचर अकाउंट्स फोर्थ चैप्टर सिंगल एंट्री सिस्टम फिफ्थ चैप्टर सेल्फ बैलेंसिंग लेजर्स लेटस डिस्कस वन बाय वन चैप्टर बेस्ड क्वेश्चंस विथ आंसर्स फर्स्ट वी विल स्टार्ट with consignment accounts the important questions and answers relating to consignment accounts are as below the first question who is consigner the person who sends the goods on consignment is called consigner this person may be a dealer distributor or manufacturer of goods what is consignment forwarding of goods from manufacturer or seller to an agent at different places for sale is known as consignment who is consignee the person to whom the goods are sent on consignment is called consignee this person is selling goods on behalf of consigner for commission what is del creditor commission del creditor commission is an additional or extra commission paid to a consignee for bearing losses on account of credit sales such as bad debts what is normal loss this is a loss arise due to normal causes such as evaporation leakage breakage drying shrinkage or dusting these losses are unavoidable this loss is not recorded in the books of accounts what is abnormal loss this is a loss arising due to abnormal factors such as accident earthquake theft etc this loss is beyond the control of human beings these losses can be avoided this loss may be incurred due to negligence this loss should be credited to consignment account mention the parties in the consignment there are two parties involved in consignment businesses namely consigner and consignee consigner may be dealer manufacturer or distributor who sends goods or services to the consignee for sale the consignee sells the goods or services supplied by consigner and charge commission for his work what is an account sale an account sale is the statement rendered by the consignee to the consigner showing the details of the goods sold price realized on sale his commission and other expenses incurred by him while exercising his duties what is loading loading is the percentage of profit added to the cost of the goods it is the difference between the invoice price and the cost price in other words it can be explained by formula loading is equal to invoice price minus cost price what is pro forma invoice pro forma invoice 
is a document sent by a consigner to a consignee giving details of goods or services and expenses incurred while sending the goods what is non recurring expenses these are the expenses incurred to bring the goods from the place of consigner to the place of consignee these are called direct expenses these expenses may be incurred by both consigner and consignee what is invoice price when goods are consigned by adding profit on cost of goods or services it is called invoice price in other words it can be explained by formula invoice price is equal to cost price plus percentage of profit these are the few questions which are very important which have appeared for previous examinations can be considered for this examination after completion of consignment chapter let us start with another important chapter royalty accounts royalty accounts is also an important chapter for the examinations which is asked for two marks questions the questions may be discussed as below what is a royalty royalty is a periodical payment made for the use of certain property or a right belong to the owner in other words royalty is an amount which is paid as consideration for the use of of a right to the owner type of royalty there are three types of royalty agreement first one mining royalty this agreement is for use of land for mining activities second one patent royalty this agreement is for use of patent rights to the patent holder for production of goods or services third one copyright royalty this agreement is with the authors of books and periodical payment made for use of authorship who is a lesser lesser is the person who surrenders his or her right for periodical payments lesser may be owner of the property author of the book or owner of the land who is a lessee lessee is the person who makes payment for use of rights belonging to the lesser what is short working when the royalty is less than the minimum rent the difference between minimum rent and royalty is known as short workings in other words short working is the excess of minimum rent over the actual royalty what is minimum rent minimum rent is the minimum fixed and assured amount of rent expected by the lesser from lessee for the use of ownership rights how do you treat irrecoverable short working if the short workings partly or wholly cannot be recovered within the specified period such irrecoverable short workings will be treated as a loss and charged to profit and loss account in the concerned year these are the few questions which are asked for the examination must be prepared for this examination 
joint venture accounts joint venture accounts is an important chapter for the examination in this chapter there are few questions which are generally asked for the examination such questions must be discussed as under what is joint venture joint venture is a business when two or more persons agree to undertake jointly a particular business concern joint venture is a particular partnership a joint venture is also known as joint adventure or joint trade who is a co-venturer the parties of a joint venture are called the co-venturers the co-venturers agree to contribute capital to carry on a particular job as soon as the business is completed the joint venture comes to an end it is single entry system it is the most important chapter for the examination usually in this examination few questions are asked every year those questions will be discussed now what is single entry system single entry system is system of bookkeeping wherein principles of double entry is not followed under this system a very few books of accounts are maintained this system is suitable for small businesses mention two advantages of single entry system there are few advantages of single entry system they are first one it is simple system of bookkeeping second one under this system a few books of accounts are maintained third one it is less costly and economical system of bookkeeping mention two disadvantages of single entry system there are few disadvantages of single entry system they are first one trial balance cannot be prepared second one profit and loss account cannot be prepared instead statement of profit or loss is prepared third one balance sheet cannot be prepared instead statement of affairs is prepared mention two features of single entry system there are few features of single entry system they are as follows this system is adopted by sole trader and small businesses this system gives partial information third one under this system any one cash book is maintained which mixes up both private and business transactions why debtors account is prepared debtors account is prepared to find out the opening balance of the debtors or closing balance of the debtors or cash received from the debtors or credit sales made during the years fifth chapter is self balancing ledgers this is the chapter which is introduced this year in nep scheme this chapter has few questions which may be asked for the examination such questions we will discuss what is self balancing self balancing is practical system of accounting wherein main ledger is more than one ledger in order to record different types of accounts at their appropriate place and 
whereby each ledger is made to balance. Advantages of self-balancing system. The following are the advantages of self-balancing system. First one, delay in balancing can be min minimized. Second one, errors can be detected easily. Third one, arithmetic accuracy of each ledger can be provided independently. Fourth one, a complete trial balance can be prepared without balancing subsidiary ledgers. Fifth one, it facilitates the quick prepare, preparation of final accounts. Sixth one, a number of bookkeepers can work on different ledgers. What is debtor's ledger? Debtor's ledger account contains all the accounts of debtors for goods sold. Entries are made in this ledger mainly from sales day book, cash book, returns inward book, and bills receivable book, etc. It is also called as sales ledger or sold ledger or customer ledger. What is creditor ledger? Creditor ledger account contains all the accounts of creditors for goods purchased. Entries are made in this ledger mainly from purchase day book, cash book, returns outwards book, and bills payable book, etc. It is also called as purchase ledger, supplier's ledgers, and bought ledger. What is general ledger? General ledger account contains nominal and personal accounts other than debtors and creditors accounts. It is also called as nominal ledger. These are the few questions asked from this chapter. Overall, these are the important questions which are asked for previous many years examinations. These may be asked for this semester financial accounting BCom first semester NEP scheme. Thank you. Jai Hind.